Hello students, this lesson is about cereals and millets. In the Indian diet, we consume a wide variety of cereals like rice, wheat, etc. This is our staple food. It forms 70% of our plate. The word cereal comes from Ceres, which means the Roman goddess of grain. In India, we consume a wide variety of cereals like rice, wheat, maize or corn and millets like jawar, ragi and bajra. We also consume cereals in the processed form that is in large factories cereals are processed into products which are easier to consume like for example flour, meal, bread and pasta products. Let us first take a look at the structure of the cereal grain. The structure of cereal grains is similar but for convenience let us look at the structure of the wheat grain. If you look at the parts of the cereal grain, it is broadly divided into three parts. The outer bran or pericarp, the endosperm and the germ. So first let us talk about the bran or pericarp. The bran or pericarp is the outermost layer of the grain and again it is composed of several layers. The grain is first surrounded by the epidermis which consists of thin-walled long rectangular cells. Next to the epidermis is the hypoderm of varying thickness. Next to the hypoderm is a seed coat or testa which may consist of a thin single or double layer of cells. Next to the seed coat is the hyaline layer which is colorless and devoid of any cellular structure. So all these four layers make up the bran or pericarp. Usually sometimes when cereals are processed, the outer bran and pericarp are removed during processing. This is actually a loss because the bran or pericarp is rich in B vitamins. Inside the bran or pericarp is the endosperm. The endosperm is surrounded by one or more layers of cells known as the aluron layer. In wheat, the aluron layer consists of thin walled cubical cells and this constitutes 7% of the grain weight. Inside the aluron layer is the endosperm. The starchy endosperm is the one which actually gives the bulk of the flour. The endosperm consists of spherical cells. These are present as spherical granules in which protein is embedded in a matrix. The endosperm consumes 70 to 80% of the grain weight and when the grain is converted into flour the flour mostly comes from the endosperm. So that's why it is known as the starchy endosperm. In one corner of the grain is the embryo or germ. The embryo or germ is rich in B vitamins. And it is from here that when the grain germinates, the sprout begins to grow from the embryo or germ. The embryo or germ consists of many parts. It is rich in protein and B vitamins. The embryo also consists of the grain stem or scutellum, which is also a very good source of B vitamins. Sometimes during processing, the embryo or germ may be removed because it also contains fat and sometimes during storage, it may be liable to rancidity. However, retaining the embryo or germ is beneficial because it adds to the nutritive value being a very good source of protein, fat and B vitamins. Thus broadly, the cereal grain can be divided into three parts, the outer bran or pericarp, which sometimes is removed while preparing white flour, the inner endosperm or starchy endosperm, which contributes to the bulk of the flour and in one corner of the grain is the embryo or germ, which actually contributes to the new plant during sprouting. Let us now look at the composition and nutritive value of cereal grains. Cereals are a very good source of energy. So we get energy while consuming cereals, for example, rice, wheat, etc. They are the main source of energy and they contribute to 70 to 80 percent of our energy requirement. So the calories which we talk about in our daily diet, they mostly come from the cereals we consume because cereals are the staple diet of many Indians. Cereals are a very good source of carbohydrates. 80 percent of the dry matter of cereals is carbohydrates. Starch is the most abundant carbohydrate present in cereals. However, small quantities of dextrin and sugars are also present. Some cereal grains have a higher amount of fiber. 
What is fiber? Fiber is nothing but indigestible carbohydrate which helps in the movement, in the bubble movement and thereby prevents constipation. So when we consume whole grain cereals without removing the outer bran or pericarp, it is beneficial because it contains more fiber. Thus whole wheat, ragi, bajra etc are very high in fiber content. Cereals are also a good source of protein. They are an important source of protein in the diet because we consume a large quantity of cereals when compared to other foods. Rice contains a smaller amount of protein when compared to wheat. Wheat is a better source of protein when compared to rice. More amount of protein is present in the embryo, in the scutellum and in the alluron layer rather than in the endosperm, in the pericarp or in the testa. Which are the proteins present in cereals? The proteins present in cereals are albumins, globulins, prolamins and glutalins. In wheat, the unique glidins and glutalins are present. These two proteins combine to form gluten proteins when wheat flour is mixed with water to form a dough. So when wheat flour is mixed with water to form a dough, glidin and glutalin combine together to form a gluten network. This gives a unique elasticity and flow property to wheat dough. It is for this reason that it is possible to make bread, chapatis, cakes, etc. with wheat. So wheat has this unique capacity because it contains these two proteins that is glidin and glutalin which are not present in the other cereal grains. Therefore, it's not possible to make cakes, bread, chapatis, etc. with the other cereal grains because they do not contain these proteins. Cereal grains contain about 6 to 12 percent proteins. However, the cereal protein is deficient in the essential amino acid lysine. Therefore, to improve the quality of the food we eat, it is better to consume cereals with pulses because pulses are a good source of lysine. However, they are deficient in sulfur-containing amino acids which are present in cereal grains. Therefore, cereals and pulses when combined together, they complement the deficiencies in each and therefore it is a complete protein. There is supplementary value of cereal grains with pulse protein. Cereals contain a small quantity of fats. The fat content in cereal is very small, only 1 to 2 percent in wheat and rice and 3 percent in maize. Most of the fat in cereal grain is present in the germ and in the bran. Sometimes during processing, the germ and bran may be removed because it is liable to develop rancidity during storage. Wheat germ contains about 6 to 11 percent fat. The fat in cereal, however, contributes more than 50 percent of our requirements of essential fatty acids. Therefore, it is a good fat. Cereals are also good sources of minerals. 95 percent of the minerals are phosphates and sulfates of potassium, magnesium and calcium. Although phosphorus is present in cereal grains, it is mostly present in the form of phytin phosphorus. These phytates tend to decrease the absorption of iron. However, germination and fermentation helps to decrease the amount of phytates. Cereals are poor sources of calcium and iron, especially rice. However, ragi is a very good source of calcium and iron. Ragi is the best source of calcium and therefore it is recommended for infant foods. The millets like ragi, bajra and jawar are rich in minerals and also in fiber because these millets are eaten whole without removing the outer bran or pericarp. Whole grain cereals are very good source of B-complex vitamins like thiamine, riboflavin and niacin. It is better to consume the cereal whole because they contain more B vitamins. But when the outer bran or pericarp is removed during processing, for example while preparing maida, the B vitamins are lost. Refining or polishing therefore decreases the B vitamin content of cereal grains. Parboiling which involves soaking of the paddy or other grains in water and then subjecting it to steaming before milling is actually beneficial because during parboiling uh, there is seeping of vitamins present in the outer layer into the grain that is it seeps inside the grain therefore parboiled rice is a better source of B vitamins than raw rice. Cereal grains are not very good sources of vitamin A or vitamin C that is they are poor sources of these vitamins except maize or corn which is a very good source of vitamin A. Wheat is mostly consumed after milling that is it's usually converted into flour and then prepared into bread, chapatis, etc. A small quantity of wheat is also converted into breakfast cereals like for example wheat flakes, puffed wheat and so on. Therefore wheat has to be milled 
before it is consumed. So this is known as processing. This is a picture of a large factory where milling of wheat is done. The milling of wheat is done in several steps. Let us now look at the steps involved in the milling of wheat. During milling, the whole wheat, that is the whole kernel, is converted into flour. Wheat is also consumed, processed. It is converted into flour because the flour lends itself to a wide range of preparations like bread, cakes, biscuits, buns and so on. A small percentage of wheat grain is also converted into breakfast cereals like puffed wheat, wheat flakes and so on. So what are the steps in milling? Let us now look at the steps in milling. The wheat grain is first cleaned to remove the small and large heavy impurities. During cleaning, the damaged kernels are also removed. Why is wheat milled? Wheat is milled to remove the outer bran or pericarp and then the endosperm, the starchy endosperm is converted into a flour known as maida. The maida or white flour or refined flour is then used for preparation of bread, cakes, biscuits and so on. So this entire milling procedure is done to convert whole wheat into maida. So the wheat grain is first cleaned then the wheat is next passed into a vibratory screen. So in this screen, the straw and coarse or foreign materials are then removed. Next, the wheat grain is passed into another machine known as the aspirator. In this aspirator, there is a huge stream of air which passes over the wheat. It lifts off the lighter impurities. The stream of grain is then directed across screens. Next, from the aspirator, the wheat grains move into a disc separator which has discs revolving on a horizontal axis. From here, the grains then move into another machine known as a scorer. Here, beaters attached to a central shaft, they throw the wheat violently against a surrounding drum, buffing each kernel and breaking off the kernel hairs. From the scorer, the wheat grains then pass into a magnetic separator. Here, there is a huge magnet which lifts off the iron and steel particles which may have been contaminated during harvesting. From the magnetic separator, the wheat grains then move into a washer stoner. Here essentially the wheat grains are washed. So the wheat is cleaned in a huge water bath. So high speed rotators, they spin the wheat in the water bath. The excess water is removed by centrifugal force. The stones etc. fall to the bottom. The lighter impurities float off, leaving only the clean wheat. After cleaning, the wheat is then subjected to tempering where a controlled amount of moisture is added to the wheat. During tempering, it aids in the separation of the bran from the endosperm. And tempering also helps in giving a controlled amount of moisture and temperature throughout the milling process. After tempering, the wheat then moves into the grinding bin. This is where the whole kernels are ground into flour. So in the grinding bin, the wheat rotates and it is slowly pulverized into small particles. The first break rolls of a mill are corrugated rather than smooth and they break into coarse particles. So the first time the wheat is broken into tiny bits that is known as the first break. After being broken into grits, these grits are then passed into a box like sifter where there is a series of cloth or screen. So to separate the larger particles from the smaller particles, it is essentially like a large sieve. So the larger particles are shaken off from the top, leaving the final flour to shift towards the bottom. From the sifter, the flour then moves into the purifier, where a controlled flow of air lifts off the bran particles, while cloth or screen separate and grade the coarse fractions by size and qualities. So finally, in the purifier, the flour is separated into bran and refined flour. The process is then repeated over and over again that is sifters, purifiers and reducing rolls until the maximum amount of flour is separated consisting of at least 72% of wheat that is when we start with 100 grams of wheat grain the process is repeated till 72 grams of flour is obtained from 100 grams of wheat. Let us now look at the wheat products. Several products can be obtained from the wheat grain the process that was just explained in milling is used to obtain maida or refined wheat flour. This is also known as white flour. However, maida is not a very good source of B-complex vitamins because the bran and aluron layer are removed while preparing maida. 
The advantage of Maida is that since it contains only the starchy endosperm, it lends itself very well to baking. So it is widely used in the baking industry to prepare bread, biscuits, buns, etc. You get a loaf of larger volume when maida or refined flour is used rather than using whole wheat flour. Whole wheat flour is prepared from the entire kernel uh, that is a germ, endosperm, bran, etc. are all pulverized in a mill to get whole wheat flour. The disadvantage with whole wheat flour is that because it also contains a germ which contains fat, it is liable to rancidity during storage. So although at home level we usually take the wheat to a nearby mill or chakki to obtain whole wheat flour, commercially sometimes the bran is removed before converting into whole wheat flour. So the disadvantage of removing the bran is that the B vitamins and also protein may be lost. Whole wheat flour lends itself to use in chapati making. Chapati is very widely famous throughout the world. It's a kind of tortilla which is famous in India. The other products obtained from wheat are semolina. What is semolina? Semolina is nothing but rava. The chemical composition of semolina is similar to maida. That is the outer bran and pericarp are removed. But the endosperm, instead of being converted into fine flour, is actually pulverized into coarse grains which is known as rava. So although the chemical composition is similar to maida, the structure is different. So semolina is also used to prepare pasta products like for example macaroni etc. Uh, semolina or rava is widely used in Indian cookery. It is used to prepare upma, it is used to prepare rava kesari and so on. However, the chemical composition is similar to that of maida because bran and pericarp is removed before converting it into uh, rava or semolina. Macaroni or pasta products are also prepared from semolina. So usually a wheat of high durum content is taken and this is then converted, the outer bran or pericarp is removed and it is converted into semolina. It is ground into semolina. This semolina is then mixed with water and formed into a dough which is then filled into a cylinder the base of which is fitted with a disc containing holes and depending upon the shape of the hole different type of products are obtained like macaroni, vermicelli etc. So macaroni is in tube form, uh, noodles are flat strips, spaghetti may be tube or rod and vermicelli is a tiny rod. These are known as pasta products. However, it's important to remember that pasta products are also similar to maida that is the outer bran or pericarp is removed before converting them into pasta products. So they are not a very good source of B-complex vitamins. However, they are easy to cook. The cooking time is shorter when pasta products are used. So they lend themselves to a wide range of preparations like upma, for example, spaghetti, macaroni, etc and children like the different shapes. So if you want to increase the nutritive value, they can be combined with meat, vegetables, etc. Malted wheat. What is malted wheat? Malting is nothing but germination. So the wheat grains are steeped in cold water for about 36 hours and then the water is drained off. The wheat grains are then spread for 2 to 3 inch thickness over wire mesh trays and after 2 or 3 days the wheat grain begins to sprout that is germination takes place and the germination is allowed in very low temperature that is it's neither too hot nor too cold so at room temperature the germination is allowed to proceed during germination the enzymes that is amylases and proteases are formed and the amylases act on starch hydrolyzing them the drying of this wheat grain should be at low temperature otherwise the enzymes will be inactivated also during malting or germination the water soluble carbohydrates and nitrogen increase. Therefore, malted grain is more digestible. The malted wheat is used for preparing, uh, for example, some of the beverages like bone vita, horlicks, etc. These are known as malted drinks. During malting, the characteristic malt flavor is developed and the malt that's a germinated grain is then dried to a moisture content of 13%. Because of all the changes which occur because of the enzymes, malted grain is more nutritious because the nutrients are in better available form. That is why malted drinks are given to children, especially school going children. Cereals are not very good sources of vitamin A. They are poor sources of vitamin A. However, maize contains a small quantity of beta carotene. However, this amount is insignificant. To improve the vitamin A content of cereals, they can be combined with vitamin A rich foods 
like for example vegetables especially green leafy vegetables and also other vegetables they can also be combined with animal protein like for example egg curds etc to improve the vitamin A content this was a lecture about cereals so we spoke about the structure of the cereal grain which is divisible mainly into three parts the outer bran or pericarp the endosperm and the embryo or germ wheat is consumed in the form of flour and it is milled in several stages so the actual process of milling involves several stages or steps to obtain white flour or maida wheat is also consumed in the form of breakfast cereals whole wheat flour and also in the form of semolina semolina can be used to prepare pasta products like vermicelli spaghetti macaroni etc wheat is a very good source of carbohydrates and also b complex vitamins